going to begin reading in the book of Acts. And so if you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me and we'll reference Isaiah because we continue to build on the scripture found in Isaiah, the 55th chapter. But the title of today's message and probably next week is Refusal to Repent. We've looked in Isaiah and we've seen that this is a book about an invitation to come. I believe in the book of Isaiah, greater than 100 times, the scripture says to come to God. It's an invitation that God makes to all people. An invitation to you and I. An invitation to whoever's listening to come to Him. God has demonstrated that He loves us. For that reason, He sent His Son, Jesus, to come into the world to save us. To save us from sin. To forgive us. For sin has different uh, ways that it captures a person. Sin captures a person, number one, by its power. People's lives today are held by power in sin. We look at all the different things that's occurring in our country throughout the world. We see our young people and all people of all ages. People are going in all kinds of different directions today. They lack respect for God and their lives are being destroyed because of sin. And sin is what separates us from God. Sin captures people's lives. It captures their minds. People's minds today are destroyed by the things they see and hear. That's why I always caution people, be careful what you continually listen to and what you continually read, what you continually watch on television. Politics has destroyed people's minds. But immorality and all the things, the symptoms of sin, we see it all around us. Sin is a power that dominates people's lives. And sin also carries a penalty. And we're going to look at those things very carefully today, beginning today, and then next week. So I challenge you to be here. I challenge you to be in prayer and to carefully listen. I challenge you to listen. And I'm asking you right now just to set aside everything in your mind. And just for the next few minutes, I want you to listen to me. And if God has called me to be a preacher, then what I'm saying to you today is important. Not because I have this great standing, not because of who I am, but I think God, when He has me speak, He's demonstrating to anyone listening or anyone that can see me, He's showing people the grace of God, His love, showing people that He's not calling us because we deserve it or earn it, but it's by grace and by the love of God. I'm here today because of God's love and grace. So if you're looking in the book of Acts, I want you to read with me. Does everybody have your Bibles? Let's give God our attention today. Open your Bibles today to the 17th chapter. Here Paul is speaking to a group of people in a city called Athens. And in the city of Athens, in Paul's day and time, so around 60 AD or something like that, 50 AD, the city of Athens was noted for, number one, philosophers. People would gather, and at these stadiums, these theaters, these gatherings, they would literally come together from different regions of the world and share new ideas, philosophers. And they would share a new idea, their opinions. And they were a very religious people. They had idols all over the city. They were erected to different gods. They were so religious that they realized that maybe they failed to acknowledge a certain deity, a certain god, and they even had an altar that said, to the unknown god. Because they realized maybe in all the many different idols they had set up throughout
throughout their city, they realized that maybe they missed one. And so they had an altar that set up and it said, this is the altar to the unknown God. That was an idol, the unknown God. And so the Apostle Paul that we looked at last week, remember how the Apostle Paul re repented as he was in the presence of Jesus and Jesus gave him a new direction in life. And the Bible tells us how the Apostle Paul repented and he sought God's forgiveness and he put his faith in Jesus and God changed his life. And now the Apostle Paul was on a journey with God and he was traveling throughout all the world at that time, sharing Jesus in different places. And here he is in Athens. And here's what he says in verse 22, Acts chapter 17. Has everyone got your Bibles open? Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Paul then stood up in the mean of Arabicus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Now what you worship is something unknown, I am going to proclaim you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. Verse 26. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Now verse 29. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, speaking of our creation relationship to God, physically, therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Now I want us to look at that one more time. And verse 30. Verse 30, Acts chapter 17. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. But now, God commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man, speaking of Jesus, he has appointed how do we know it's Jesus? We go on to read. He has given proof of this to all men by raising Jesus, that is him, from the dead. Here the scripture says that God has commanded all men, all people, everywhere to repent. That is the message of God's word. Jesus came preaching the message Repent and believe. Repent and believe God's testimony. Now I want us to listen very carefully. Everyone listen. We come into God's presence to listen and to receive. Don't let your mind wander. Don't let your minds go drifting off on other things. But learn to capture what God's word says. God says, I have commanded all people in every place to repent. Now I 
want to listen. Because the church stands at the crossroads on this message. Now listen carefully. We, as Christians and preachers, we are at the crossroads in the history of the church. I say that, listen very carefully. And here's why. Because we are more concerned about preaching a message that people want to hear than what God has delivered. I want you to hear that again. Our churches, our preachers are at the crossroads with God. And that is, we are more concerned about sharing with people what they want to hear instead of giving people what God's Word says. It's true. And I want you to give an example. Here we read that God has commanded all people everywhere to repent. Now here's, here's what I'm getting at. I just want us to listen for just a moment. I know it's getting late, but I want you to focus on what I'm about to say. People say, well, I was born this way. I'm born this way. There's a movie that talks about how people are sometimes murderers. They're born that way. They're born with this inclination of anger and aggression. Some people say, well, I'm born this way with an addiction, whatever it might be. I was born this way. And I want to say this, listen very carefully on God's Word. We are all born sinners. We are all born sinners. The Scripture says in, in Psalms chapter 51, listen to what God's Word says. And here's the importance of what I just said. Listen to what God's Word says. Not what Paul Adams says. Not my opinions. And not your opinions. That is when, listen, so many people never come to know God because they have formed their own opinions. It's their way. And what they try to do is say, I believe in God, but I want God to be a piece of my life. He's not going to tell me how I should live, how I should behave, how I should act. I've been born this way. I'm going to live my life pleasing myself. And I'm going to bring God in as part of my life. But that's not the Christian message. That's not what it means to repent. Repent means, as I've said before, according to God's Word, it means to receive God's Word as truth, all of it, and to say, God, in response to your Word, I'm going to surrender my life to you and say, God... Yes, I've been born with these weaknesses, these sins in my life. That's my human nature. We all have a human nature. We're born that way. That's why Jesus came to give us the life of God, the divine nature. That's what he meant when Jesus said, you must be born again. That's the only way for me to change is to be born of God. I can't change my human nature. I can't change my human heart. Only God can. And that's why Jesus came and died on the cross and was raised again. He has given us His Spirit so that when we, when we repent and trust in Him, His Spirit comes into our lives and we're born again, receiving the divine nature of God. Only God can change us. And here's what the Scripture says. In Psalm chapter 51. Are you there with me? Look at verse, let's just begin reading at verse 4. Psalm chapter 51, verse 4. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. And here's what it says in verse 5. Sinful, I was, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Did you see that? Psalm chapter 51 and verse 5. 
I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. I was born with a human nature inclined to sin. That is the weakness of the flesh. Is everyone following me? Does everyone follow me? It's not important to follow me, but I should say it this way. Does everyone follow God's Word? I need you looking at me and paying attention. Does everyone understand God's Word, what it says here? I was born in my sinful nature from the day I came in, June 14, 1967, from Paul Adams. I was born with a human nature to sin. No one had to teach me to lie. No one had to teach me to be lazy. No one had to teach me to lust as a teenager. No one had to teach me about sex. No one had to teach me how about stealing, cheating. Those things were born in me physically and passed on as my human nature. And those things, if I live by that nature, I will die in my sins. Everyone listen to that. That is God's word. Now some may laugh at that. And some may say, wait a minute, you need to be careful. You're never going to get people in your church. That's not today's way of preaching. That doesn't fit with society. The new way of preaching today is to tell everybody how good they are, and God wants to be your friend, and God loves them, and God's going to help them, and they should be of good cheer, and all those things are true. God is your friend. God does love you. But do not forsake what God's Word teaches. We've all sinned against God. Therefore, He came and put His Son on the cross. Now, I want us to look at what it says here in 1 Corinthians. And we're going to close here. And I want us to listen carefully what 1 Corinthians, I want everyone to turn there. It's the 6th chapter. Because His Word is what is important. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and verse 9. And I want us to listen carefully. Does everybody have your Bibles open? I want everybody reading it with me. We're going to close with this scripture. I'm going to say a few words. We're going to close right here. I want you to look what God's Word says. Verse 9, 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see that? I want you to underline that in your Bibles. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? And look what it goes on to say after that. What's it say? Do not be deceived. That means don't let anyone else lead you astray. Don't form your own opinion. Don't come up with your own different conclusion. Here's what God's Word says. The wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't you be led astray. Don't think otherwise. But here's what the Bible goes on to say. God's Word. This is God's Word. If it's not God's Word, then we need to pack up and turn off the lights. Yes. Because you don't need to come here and listen to my opinion. Paul Adams is a fool. I'll tell you that now. But I do believe in God's Word. His Scriptures were given to me. And those who live by them will inherit eternal life. That's why God called me to preach. He took a fool like me to demonstrate that God has the wisdom. God has the grace. And I am sharing to you what God has given to me. And so I want us to follow on. Does everybody have your Bibles? Are you ready to follow me? Yes? yes? Let's keep reading. Neither, and this is for me, for all of us, and everyone listening, for you, carefully listen. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Does everyone read that? I didn't make that up. That's 
not the Baptist opinion or the Catholic opinion. It doesn't matter. I don't care what any preacher says today or politician or anyone. Priest, king, what matters is what God's word says. And you and I have to make a judgment call. You have to make a judgment call. The listener, you have to make a judgment call. You can either repent and say, here's what God's word is saying to me. Here's what God's word says. It says, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? And it goes on to describe the symptoms, the nature of the wicked. We read that together. That's God's word. And Paul Adams and Len and Ryan and Samantha and Joyce and everyone else listening in, we have to decide. The listener on this video, if you're listening today, you have to make a decision. I will either repent and say, God, I hear your word. I have failed you. I'm living that lifestyle. I was born with this weakness, but because your word, I respect it. Because this is God's word, I want you to change my life. I repent. That means, God, I want a new direction. Your word tells me that if I continue living this way, I will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're not pleased with me. Therefore, because your word tells me how I should live and behave, and because your son Jesus he came, that's why we celebrate this wonderful season of Easter. He came and he died for us, didn't he? Yes. Why did he die? I say that with exclamation and I mean it with emotion. Some have, listen, we have left the scripture, we've left the whole idea, the doctrine of sinfulness. You don't, I guarantee if you turn on most preachers today, and I'm not comparing myself to any. You'll never hear people preaching about sin anymore. But to do so, you might as well throw the Bible out the window. Because it makes no sense. Why did Jesus come and die a horrible death on the cross? He was brutally beaten. He died abandoned on the cross. He cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the sins of the world, the wrath of God was poured upon Jesus. And he died. Why? Because sin was paid for. That is the reality of sin. And to say that, you know what, I'm just going to live my life my own way. I hear what you're preaching. I believe in God. Yeah, I want God to be my help. I want God to be my strength. I want God to make me feel good. But I'm going to live my own life. I'm going to live my life and behave the way I want to. That's my own life. And I say to you, God's word says to you, listen carefully. You have refused to repent. I have refused to repent if that's my attitude. And the Bible says the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. That's for me and everyone. Everyone. I don't care what religion you're in. If you fail to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus and say, God, I need you to get my life straight. I need to, I need to quit some things. I need to change my behavior. And by your power and your power only, I'm asking you to change me day by day, step by step. God will answer your prayer because that's what God wants to do in your life. Here's what the scripture says. And I promise I'll close with this. Listen carefully what God's word says. This is so very important. I want you to listen very carefully. Here's what it says. 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 9. Here's what it says. Now, you don't have to turn down. I want you to listen. The Bible says, who, speaking of God, who will have all people, all people, who will have all men to repent, all, including everyone listening here in this sanctuary, anyone listening to this video, who will have all men to repent. That is God's will for your life. Every person who will have all men to repent, which means to come to God and say, God, yes, I've sinned against you. I'm living this way. I'm living this lifestyle. I repent. I want to change. I need a change in my heart. I respect your word. And I know that there's things in my life that are dominating me. They're controlling me. And I'm looking to you for forgiveness. And I'm looking to you for a new life. And God will promise you this. He will give you the strength to change. He will give you the power to change. 
God will give you a new heart, a new desire. That's what the Bible says. Who will have all men to repent and to come to Him. That's His will for your life. We're going to talk more about what it means to refuse to repent because sometimes when we refuse to repent as Christians, it is devastating. And we're going to talk more about that next time. I hope you're listening today. I hope you've listened to what God's Word says. And we're going to close in prayer.